Hi guys, today I'm going to read chapter 7 of Pasquella. It's called A Different Way of Life. The ringing of the mission bells at sunrise began our day. After prayers, the bells called us to our morning meal. We no longer ate thick acorn meal mush, but we were given a tole, a thin mush made of cornmeal or barley. Sometimes vegetables were added to the atole. When the sun was straight overhead, our work-filled mornings ended with another bowl of atole that sometimes had meat added to it. At the end of the long, hot afternoons, the bells called us to evening prayers and the evening meal. After the meal, the Padres handed us pieces of fruit grown in the mission orchards. The neophytes had planted young fruit trees in straight rows close to the mission walls. During the warm months, the tree branches bent under the weight of purple figs and golden peaches. My favorite fruit was the size of my fist. Round and red with the tough skin, this fruit was filled with red seeds. I loved chewing the seeds as they stained my fingers and lips with their juicy sweetness. It was hard for me to say the name of the fruit, pomegranate. At the mission, the Padres would not allow my mother and me to wear tule skirts. We wore long dresses that touched our ankles. I did not like the way the skirt scratched my legs and felt heavy on my body. My father wore a woolen shirt that reached to his knees. He also wore a breech cloth or long pants. It took me a while to get used to seeing my parents in their strange clothes. The Padres spoke a language different from ours. Most of the neophytes at the mission spoke the Chumash language and the language of the Padres. One of the Padres spoke a few words of the Yokuts language. He told us stories about his God. He also taught us to speak the Spanish language. I missed speaking my own language as I missed hearing the Yokut stories that my grandfather had told me. I always remember sitting around the warm fire in our cowie on long winter evenings listening to the stories that grandfather had told us. When Watite, the ground owl, would call, grandfather would then tell the story of Tepitnitz, the great bird person, and Caillou, the coyote. I know it best of all my stories. The Legend of Tepitnitz and Caillou Tepitnitz is the name of the great bird, person who rules over the Yokut's land of the dead. Tepitnitz Pond is the land where the dead Indians go. It is six nights' journey to the north. Only the good people can get there. The dead people dance a lonewise or crying dance there every night. They play games and have a good night, good time. They eat tight toyuk, a food that never gets any smaller, no matter how much they eat. In the morning, the dead all disappear and nothing can be seen of them until the next night when Wanatun, the messenger, builds new fires for the dancers and calls them all back. The Yokuts always walk quietly through the forest for it may be the place where the dead hold the lone wise. In the Tepitnitz pond, Caillou the coyote and Tepitnitz, the great bird person, always play the old game of Kisa Nayus. When Tepitnitz wins, one of the Yokuts must die and go to Tepitnitz pond. When Caillou wins, he tries to bite Tepitnitz and pulls feathers from him. Caillou throws the feathers that he pulls from Tepitnitz to the south, and the north wind below brings them to Yokuts in the form of the first white geese of the winter. When the Yokuts see the first white geese come, they know Caillou the coyote won the game. When the Yokuts hear Watite, Tepitnitz's messenger, wail in the evening, they know Tepitnitz the great bird person has won the game and that someone who has died is arriving in Tepitnitz Pond to dance in the Lone Weiss forever.